In today's video, we are finally getting on to testing out the 11900K from Intel. Well, the CPU is actually in the system right now. And we're testing it out with our different latency tests here, where I'm using the system on both Windows 10 and Windows 11. And in previous videos, you guys have really liked this series. So we're gonna keep it up in terms of not just doing these tests, but also talking about my subjective experiences on this CPU and the architecture. And in this case, we're using this on a Z590 Phantom Gaming ITX TB4 motherboard. And this has some improvements over 10th gen in particular, because 10th gen is my main CPU on the Z490 motherboard at this point in time. It's an extremely snappy experience. I absolutely love it for doing what I do, and that's editing videos in Premiere Pro with multiple applications open at the same time. And so when it comes down to snapping between different applications, I really notice the differences in my day-to-day -day routine. And so what I'm happy to say here is that on Windows 10, the 11900K is a really good experience. Windows 11, not so much, and we'll get onto that later in the video. But what happened here, from what I'm told from sources, is the 11900K is codenamed Rocket Lake. And that was a change from the 10th gen, which was codenamed Comet Lake. And here they made some changes to the microarchitecture, and it was originally intended for 10 nanometer, but they had problems in implementing the 10 nanometer solution to desktop users at the time, and so they backported the 11th gen architecture for desktop to 14 nanometer plus 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 plus. However, with this architecture, you did get some improvements and that was you got PCIe Gen 4. They also improved the level one cache latency as well. That was a big focus on 11th gen. However, at the same time, because it remained on 14 nanometer, the power consumption per core was even higher than the 10th gen CPUs. And so what we're seeing here, and from what I'm told, is that this is still a true ring bus architecture in nature, as opposed to 12th and 13th gen, which changed away from that with the hybridization of ring bus plus E cores, which are essentially like mesh cores. So this one did show, and we'll pull up, we're gonna start with the Windows 10 results here, but we'll get onto those results right after today's video sponsor. Do you find yourself strapped for time? <laughs> Well, don't we all? This is where today's video sponsor comes in. With the Eufy Clean X8 Pro, you can now not worry about vacuuming your house, as this intelligent vacuum cleaner can do it all for you. All you have to do is unbox, set it up, and it will start cleaning. And this unit is also the most powerful I have seen to date for an automated system. With the world first trademarked twin turbine suction dual 4000 PA system, an active detangling roller brush, it won't just suck up the dirt, but is also designed specifically for sucking up pet hair too. With a two-in-one mop and standard vacuum, it will have all bases covered. Just simply install the app, map your house with a customized AI map, which is unique to the Eufy Clean by the way, and it will do the rest for you. You can also set no-go zones, alternate schedules, and since this unit is rated for 45 days no maintenance, it means that you can have more you time. Now included is not just the vacuum with this model, but also a self-empty station, power cord, mop module, cleaning tool, and all manuals needed to get going. So you don't have to worry about spending a penny more on any annoying DLCs or micro transactions. For support, you have Apple iOS, Android, and it can be voice activated to work with Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa. And perhaps you would like a discount with a coupon code, you ask? Well, for Tech Yes City viewers, you can use the link in the description below and get your vacuum cleaning all automated at a discount. Let's get back to the video. This did extremely well in Windows 10, where we'll start off with input latency because a lot of people are maybe concerned about the input latency. Is there any problems here, any hitching? And here's where the uh, 11900K actually did on average the best out of the four CPUs that we've done this test with. And so this is done with a 1000 FPS camera on Windows, a fresh install of Windows 10, 
before I've installed any applications just to get the raw input latency numbers. However, the next test we're doing here is the uh, 10 rapid file openings in Windows 10, just as a base case to see if there's anything wrong with the CPU to begin with. And here is where it passed this test with flying colors. It was absolutely fine and ever so slightly faster than the 10850K, which is something important because I feel like maybe I'm going to, after this video, switch just the CPU in my main system and give it a whirl as a daily driver because it's going to be a completely hassle-free install of the CPU and then I can see if things change and whatnot because Windows 10 is very friendly to all the CPUs that I've done these tests on here. However, going on to DPC latency, here is where I install multiple applications after this fact and my video editing software, for instance, and then I open up DPC latency and check the latency scores. And here is where we got the lowest score with the 11900K in Windows 10. So this was a really good result to see, and this is after leaving it open for a minute. Now, I know there's some people in the comments that say they can get these numbers lower. I certainly can get these numbers lower as well if we're just doing a fresh install of Windows and installing your basic drivers, and that's it, as well as installing, of course, a tuned Windows 10. But that's not what I'm looking for personally when I do these results. This is for me editing videos and power using, and after I've set that base case up, for how I would use the PC. The next test here is going to be searching for the files from the search bar, which is something that I do regularly when I'm looking for a file, when especially when I'm editing a video and I need to quickly get a file and then open that up and drag and drop it in. And here's where we're looking at the latency from the search from the last key press to initiate to when it displays the result up on the screen. And here's where the 11th gen CPU did not differ from either 10th or 13th gen CPUs. So this was done at 120 FPS in this case, and it does have an advantage over the Ryzen CPU in this particular benchmark. But as we saw in the previous benchmark, the openings of the files, Ryzen actually won that one. So from what I can tell with Windows 10 using the 11900K, everything is smooth sailing. And in fact, the results were quite impressive, though it wasn't the case with Windows 11. And we're going to move on to those results now where I got some really interesting and contrasting numbers that gave me a lot of insight further into the testing that I've been doing here over the last few months. So Windows 11 started to exhibit some weird behavior, but we'll get through the good results first, and that is the DPC latency numbers, which were absolutely fine, even though they were worse than Windows 10 after I installed the same amount of applications for what I would do normally. Though moving on to the Madman music search here, and that's just searching for a music file that I use in some of my videos, and then waiting for that search to then display the file. This here was a mediocre result, only just beating that of 13th gen, and then losing to the 10th gen in this particular benchmark. And then going on to rapidly opening files in Windows 11, here's where it passed the test fine, where I open up 10 files, but we did get a hitch during one of the tests here, and this kind of hitching is the exact reason why I went back now to Windows 10. Because even though the Windows 11 showed that the 12th and 13th gen was giving me some really bizarre behavior to the point where I absolutely hated the whole experience on Windows 11 plus 12th and 13th gen, the Windows 11 was exhibiting weird behavior on the 11900K in this fashion. And this actually extended to the MP4 drag and drop test where I rapidly drop files from a folder with MP4 files for video editing into Adobe Premiere Pro. If there's any hitching or any stuttering, I do notice it. And this was smooth sailing through most of the tests, but again, there was some very slight hitching in some of the tests here, which did come out. That being said though, dragging and dropping massive files, if I'm doing say a, a montage and I need the whole uh, sequenced video files in that setting and dropping that into Premiere Pro initially, that was absolutely fine. And that was very snappy and quick on this 11900K. So with those results out of the way, general testing that I like to do as well is just the whole user experience on Windows 11 and Windows 10 on these particular CPUs that I'm testing. And one test that I always do is when my brain's in the middle of thinking about something, I'll just grab my mouse and smash the right click and then go refresh, refresh, refresh. In fact, I've always been doing this ever since I played CS 1.6 on PC. 
So I don't know if you guys are like me, but it's just something of a habit that I do on the desktop. And here's where on Windows 11 I found it was sometimes you just got these weird delays and I feel like that's to do with the OS itself with all the backend baked in telemetry and all the other crap that they put in that OS. And even if you get rid of most of it, there's still some of it there hanging in the background. So that's my biggest issue after doing most of this testing is that Windows 11 itself has just gone from when I initially tested on the preview, which felt like it was really lightweight, it's gone from that to now being a bloated OS over time. And Windows 10, you can just, I find you've got much more control over that and it works a lot better for power using and just snapping around. And so there it all is with the i9 11900K. It was probably one of the weirdest launches and actually probably one of the worst launches for Intel because this result right here really painted a bad picture for the 11900K where you went from max theoretical performance of the 10900K being higher than the next generation release flagship from Intel, which was the 11900K. However, it was an eight core 16 thread versus the 10 cores 20 threads on the 10900K. But I feel like if you've got this CPU and you pick it up for a bargain, which we did when we were doing a parts hunt, if you pick up the 11900K, it's gonna be a great experience. It's gonna be a great CPU. In fact, most of the 11th gen CPUs are gonna be good gaming value CPUs if you can pick them up for the right price. So don't be deterred from 11th gen, and especially if you've already got one, I'd recommend just using it on Windows 10. That would be my core advice coming out of today's video. But closing out these results, Windows 11 just showed me that there's just some insane fuckery going on with that OS especially when you start using it heavily and you want to get the best performance out of it. Anyway, guys, with all that out of the way, I hope you enjoyed the series thus far. I do like doing this series because at the end of the day, I know there's a lot of other people out there like me. You guys are all over this in the comments. You love this kind of discussion, these kinds of talks. But I want to, as well, talk to a lot of other people in the field who love latency. And I know there's a lot of people that do talk about it, but there seems to be this stigma in, in presenting numbers and talking about the situation and giving out opinions. People are afraid of it. Uh, and I don't know why they would be afraid of it when an opinion's an opinion. And it doesn't matter if you get to the results that help your lifestyle. For me, changing to a 10th gen from a 13th gen has been such a big difference for my daily work routine that it's, I, I just can't tell you over a video all the time saving now and all the little frustrations that have been eliminated from going back to this architecture. So that's just my personal experience. I'm not afraid to talk about it. And I wish that more people would get involved in the discussion. And especially if you've got some of your favorite YouTubers out there, they would look into this more as well. And perhaps we can get some macro benchmarks out there that do a lot of different things at the same time and measure latency within that and get some sort of standardized testing for real world latency. That would be a great figure to hold these CPU companies to a different standard rather than just looking at Cinebench results and just looking at AFK benchmarks. Because for me, this matters so much more than those Cinebench results. And so hopefully you guys got some insight out of this, but the 11900K, it's good to go, but it is a hot and hungry CPU. You will have to have a really good water cooler, just like, I guess, any of the i9s that have been released. You're gonna need a good water cooler to get the most out of that CPU and make sure that it's running properly. Another thing that we will talk about before we go, if you are on Windows 10, I my personal experience here is disabling in the BIOS, these security features, TPM 2.0, disable the um, secure boot settings and things like that. I turn these settings off because I've actually done some testing already, which will be out next month for raw total system input latency with these settings on versus off. And the results are actually, I mean, they're not massive, but they are there. And so if you wanna have your system just running as snappy as possible, then I'll help out with the video next month for you guys. Anyway guys, with all that aside, it is a Friday. I'm looking forward to getting some pizza tonight and man, I love a good pizza. It's gonna be a good reward for getting this video out for you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and also let us know in the comments section below if you have any questions or comments 
about today's video. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question right here. And it comes from It's Akal and they ask, these tests are why I first found you. 3900K latency due to thread director or Windows just being your behinds. I only updated to Windows 11 yesterday. All is fine so far. So the thing about Windows 11 is you, you only been on there for one day, but I guarantee you <laughs> over time, there is going to be the nuances and they are going to come out and they are going to annoy you sooner or later. That's what I found Windows 11. It was initially, especially for me, it was initially pretty good. I was actually pretty excited about it. But then over time, just all the things that I remember being better in my workflow on Windows 10, they were all really stronghold memories there. And getting back to all that now has just made me realize how bad Windows 11 is. So hopefully your experience is better, but I wouldn't be um, holding my hopes too high. So <laughs> hope that answers that question. Though also on that note with 12th and 13th gen, people asking me to take a look at 14th gen. If I get my hands on 14th gen, I'm actually gonna be doing a lot of different tests. I wanna speak to some other, especially pro overclockers out there and see um, what the best setup they use with 12th, 13th and 14th gen is because a lot of people tell me that I should be just going to Windows 10 on even 12th and 13th gen and just disabling all the e cores. So <laughs> it kind of defeats the purpose of getting those CPUs, but if that's the best way to use the CPU, then so be it. But I'll be looking into that perhaps with 14th gen. And with all that said, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.